Number 13. Then lo the Lord said to Moses, send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I'm giving to the Israelites. I give them a glimpse, Moses. I told them exactly what they were about to get. Give them a glimpse, Moses. So Moses sends them out. Now watch what happens here, guys. Difference between belief and faith. Watch what happens. The Israelites believed Aaron. They believed Moses. Hmm. But they didn't believe God. And there's a difference there. You can believe your mama. You can believe your teachers. I need you to believe God. Because God is the only one that is living. Hmm. Watch. His living endures. You about to see this. You about to see it. They came back to Moses after they went out and explored it, right? For 40 days, 12 people. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land in which you sent us and it does flow with milk and honey. It's just like God said it was. Here is its fruit. But the people there, now watch this. It's easy to believe and worship when it's easy, but the people there are powerful and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev, the Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of this land, for we could certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land that they had explored. Listen to me, it was just like God said it was. Except they only had belief, they didn't have faith. They had belief in themselves. But when they saw something bigger than themselves, boom, belief went out the window. They had no faith. And faith endured. How I know? Because Caleb was like, Shut your face, boys. It's time to go. God can surely deliver us. But the report spread through all the people, and all the people that simply believed didn't get to experience the promise of God. But Caleb was a different uh, breed. They, Caleb was cut from a different cloth. Him and Joshua, ooh, baby, they had some faith inside of them. They believed in a God, not just in their abilities or what their eyes saw. They believed in a promise. And when they saw the glimpse of the promised land, they said, let's get it. This is what I want. I ain't settling for less. What he says I can have, I want all of it. Why? Because my God is living and active and he is with us. He said we can have it. Let's go and get it. And that is the type of determination. That is the type of heart. That is the living word that you need inside your self to endure what God needs you to endure. Because after enduring for a short period, you will walk in that promise. And I promise you, I don't know how long that short period is, but it's worth it. Caleb endured 40 years. Watch this. You want to talk about a living word? Caleb, for 40 years, kept himself ready to roll. For 40 years. He was out doing burpees in that desert place. Why? Because as soon as he was given opportunity, he was going to get what was his. He saw the glimpse and he wanted it. Hey, nothing else going to deter me. I don't care how many laps I got to do in this desert around this mountain. I am going to be ready when God is ready so he ain't got to find someone else to go and do. So I tell you about my story. 2006, he calls me out. Nine late years later, I get to see the glimpse, right? It's been how long since then? 2015, six years, going on seven now, since I saw the glimpse of it and I ain't tasted the fruit of it yet. Like I ain't walking in it yet. But I promise you, I'm having me a heart like Caleb because I am going to see my God come through, not for me, for his own namesake, because it was him that spoke the words. It was him that gave the promise. And I will believe in those words. That is what faith is. It ain't on my strength. I got no idea how this is going to happen or when this is going to happen. But I'm going to take a play out of Caleb's playbook and I'm going to keep myself ready so that when God does bring the open door, so when God does release um, the cage, we go out and we get what's ours. He ain't going to have to find someone else. He ain't going to have to wait on us to get ready because we're going to stay ready and be ready with it. You think I'm playing with you? Caleb comes to Joshua after 40 years of wandering that desert and God brings them once more into that promised land. You know the thing he glimpsed four decades earlier? What he saw never left his heart. He determined right then and there that he would have every foot Every place he set his foot that God said he could have, he would have. 
And Caleb comes to Joshua and he says, listen to me, I was 40 years old when I was given the promise. I'm 80 now, but I am still just as, uh, just as, what is the word, vibrant now as I was then. I will drive out those giants because they ain't never left. No one else drove them out. And you know what this dude, dude did at 80? He went and took what was his, and he drove them giants out. And some of y'all, you're going to have to endure some time, and you're going to have to get ready. The fight ain't going nowhere. When you're ready, it's ready. But if you will determine that you're going to get what God has for you, I promise he will take you in. Everyone else that simply believed in their strength and their ability and what they can do, as soon as they met that size of opposition, and that size of opposition is coming, they stopped. They stopped, and they never received the fullness of what God had for them. And here's what I cannot leave you without saying. You were not just saved from something, you were saved for something. Ha! Ah, let me say that one more time because I think some of y'all missing it. You in the back, listen up. You listening at home, listen up. You were not just saved from something, you were saved for something. These boys, these Israelites, weren't saved from Egypt only. They were saved for the promised land as well. And you were not saved from your sins by Jesus. And that was it. He was saving you for a purpose. Do not cut it short. Just because you got saved from sin does not mean God is done with you. He is saving you for those good works he has planned for you. For the reason he's got breath in your lungs. For the reason that you have, your foot has hit the floor today. You have purpose in place. You ain't saved on accident. You are saved for a purpose. He has got a promised land for you to come into. He has got wonderful things for you to take part in, for your hands to be put to. You are saved for something as well as from something. 